Welcome to Frontier Precision's Tailgate Series. I'm Bob Green, and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, Trimble Centerpoint RTX and some of the enhancements that have been going on over the past uh, nine, 10 months or so. And also not only about the service itself, but uh, about new features that have been added into Trimble Access. Uh, most recently, uh, uh, the inclusion of displacement models. Um, also here today to talk to you and promote Trimble's upcoming uh, webinar on February the 2nd. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that later, but they're going to do a deep dive into um, RTX and solutions and Trimble Access and Trimble Business Center. So what I'm going to do here is get out of the snow and the cold, hop on my computer, uh, show you a couple of slides, and then head back out in the field to do a little test to see how well everything works. We'll see you back here in a little bit. Okay, so what I want to talk about is some game changers that have happened over the past 10 months or so. Um, and uh, the first one is the announcement on May 5th of 2020 for RTX fast um, coverage for the continental United States and parts of southern Canada. As you can see, prior to May 5th, of 2020 there were some white areas and those white areas were had rtx uh, center point rtx uh, but unfortunately the fast service was not available in those areas and there's a big difference between the two of them um, the uh, fast service boasts um, uh, uh, convergence or initialization in less than a minute at two centimeters rms and in order to get that same um, two centimeters RMS uh, without the fast service took um, at approximately 15 minutes. So those white areas that you see there, um, RTX was not quite as attractive. And especially for those companies who traveled the U.S., say for oil and gas or pipeline work or things like that, in certain areas they could use it and in certain areas they couldn't. So um, May 5th was a big day with the announcement of RTX fast service for the continental United States. Next, what we're going to look at is the um, improvements that have been made to the way that um, um, uh, datums are interfaced. So um, RTX uh, is uh, coordinates or uh, broadcasted coordinates are um, ITRF values. And um, legacy, um, when um, RTX first came out up until the fairly recent past, was ITRF 08, Epoch 05. Um, and uh, uh, to make a long story short, you ha in order to get onto NAT83, um, if you wanted state plane coordinates, or modified state plane, whatever, you had to either perform what was called a RTK to RTX offset, um, and it was a routine um, that you did out in the field, or you had to do a site calibration. And um, up at the top right there is the results of a site calibration with legacy that would be pre uh, uh Trimble Access 2020. Um, so you have a, a 2.3 by about a 3.3 uh, translation, and the um, hypotenuse between them uh, is right at 4 feet or 1.2 meters. Um, and you'd have to do that on each job that you went out to in the field. So again, didn't make RTX quite as attractive. In 2020, um, uh, we, uh, Trimble started interfacing directly with the ITRF current epoch values, um, uh, the tw uh, ITRF 2014 uh, current epoch, and then making a on-the-fly uh, um, transformation to NAT83 2011. Um, that all worked okay, but as you can see at kind of at the bottom right there, 
there was still an issue of about a tenth and a half um, uh, between uh, uh, the the translation routine. So um, even though we had made strides moving forward, um, we still had to, if you really wanted to get onto uh, the NAT83 coordinate system, you still had to do a site calibration. And this frustrated some customers. So what I could do is I could independently go into a state plane zone, calculate the uh, transformation, uh, and then they could apply that transformation when they were out in the field to avoid having to do a site calibration. So there was still a uh, missing piece to the puzzle, I guess you could say, and now we have filled in that piece. And what has happened is we are now interfacing directly with uh, displacement models. And uh, what a displacement model is, it kind of shows there on the left-hand side. And this, um, this image comes directly from a white paper recently released uh, from Trimble. Uh, and I have a link to that white paper um, uh, down below. So, um, and it fully explains, but the, uh, the nuts and bolts of it is the, um, if you see that, uh, that gray thick dashed line, um, that is the national displacement, uh, or excuse me, national deformation model. And, um, and then we see that star, the yellow star, an earthquake happened. And so there's a patch. Um, to accommodate for that earthquake shift, and then the patch gets applied to that uh, th uh, thick uh, gray dashed line, which is velocities, and um, um, and so there's there's two combinations. There's that patch that happens, and also that gets applied to local velocities. Now. Uh, this is important uh, for a couple reasons. Um, one, it takes care of that tenth and a half offset issue. Two, this is the exact same um, displacement model uh, that is used by the National Geodetic Survey. That is the horizontal time-dependent positioning utility version 3.2.9. So, we are now directly using the same uh, model as is found on the NGS website, and you can find that under the um, geodetic toolkit um, link. Um, so what we're going to end up with here is um, once I'm done, I'm going. I did an opus position the other day. And we're going to go stake out to that and see how well we hit it uh, with uh, CenterPoint RTX. Um, here I'm, I'm showing how the uh, the coordinate system, when you set it up in uh, Trimble Access, you can now see that displacement model, uh, that uh, horizontal time dependent uh, positioning utility, um, uh, displayed when you set up your um, your coordinate system. So it it's it's right out there in the open. The thing you got to keep in mind too is that the you know this is going to change over time. I mean if if earthquakes or, or seismic events happen, um, then this uh, it'll go from 3.2.9 to possibly 3.3, and you'll need to make sure you keep up with your Trimble Access versions will uh, be important uh, moving forward. Also, keep in mind that in order to get these new features, you would have to have the latest Trimble Access 2020.2. Um, and that is the only version that this displacement model is um, is uh, incorporated. So it will be moving forward, but you have to have a minimum of uh, version 2020.2. Another kind of thing I included here that I don't believe I touched on on any of my other RTX uh, videos is... Um, uh, not only now do you get uh, your horizontal and vertical precisions and you you have the option now in access of different ways to report them. So legacy um, uh, uh, Trimble access from over the past 20 years back to the TSC-1 survey controller um, 
your horizontal the uh, um, the uh, precisions that you see at the bottom of your screen were DRMS, um, and which is an offshoot of one sigma, and then the vertical was one sigma. Um, you now have these display options where you can choose one sigma itself, or 95% confidence, or 99% confidence. So we now have four different ways um, in order to view them, the legacy DRMS, um, uh, one sigma, 95%, and 99%. Um, you also get a full um, covariance matrix, as you can see here. Um, so when you select your QC2, um, even though you're not uh, physically measuring a baseline, your your the the, um, the unbiased statistical data encased in the covariance matrix is still available to you. And uh, this is actually a survey report. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Trimble uh, comes out with uh, several other reports that can kind of simplify this so that you can customize uh, the data that you want to see um, uh, from RTX if you have to deliver it to a customer and you have to meet certain requirements. Um, so I'm hoping that that would be coming shortly. Next, um, not all receivers naturally are Trimble RTX compliant uh, on the center point side. Um, however, the R10, R10 II, R12, and R12i are compliant. Um, I am getting better results with the R10 II and up. Legacy R10 units uh, still work, but your precisions don't quite get to where they are, as we'll witness out in the field, um, but they still work. And um, uh, I believe that is due to the uh, ProPoint technology, Trimble ProPoint, that's in the R10-2s, R12s, and R12Is. Um, also, both used on the mapping and survey side, the Trimble R2 is compliant, uh, the legacy uh, R9S, the Net R9 um, uh, infrastructure geospatial receiver, and the uh, the newer um, Trimble alloy um, are all RTX compliant. On the Spectra side, we have the uh, SP80, SP85, the SP60, um, and the SP90M are all RTX compliant as well. Um, although my, uh, I don't see the response time with them quite as good as I do with the ProPoint receivers, uh, but they still work. I've done quite a bit of testing with them and with uh, Survey Pro as well. So all that works, um, just making you aware of that. And then um, I thought it was going to end the uh, uh, the 31st of December of 2020, but it appears to still be continuing, which is a 30-day trial. At least the website's still up. So um, a 30-day trial for uh, 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 CenterPoint RTX. Sign up, and it's uh, it's good for 30 days. Before, they used to give you like a shorter, less than a week trial when you really didn't have enough time to put it through its paces, um, as I've done here over the past year or so. Uh, so uh, a 30-day trial, um, uh, check it out, uh, fill out the form, and um, enjoy RTX for a month at no cost. Uh, the next thing I would like to uh, bring up, and I had mentioned it out in the field, but um, the uh, Trimble on February 2nd uh, is from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, is having an in-depth deep dive webinar on CenterPoint RTX and Trimble uh, Business Center and Trimble Access Interfaces uh, entitled Untethered Surveying with CenterPoint RTX. Um, you can sign up. I also have a link to that sign up there down below, um, and it's free of charge and will be uh, packed with um, some high-end information on RTX and RTX workflows. Okay, last but not least, um, I'm going to go back out in the field, and um, uh, while I'm out there, I'm going to do a stakeout 
to this OPA solution that I did yesterday. And um, uh, as you can see here, I did get pretty good ho horizontal um, um, uh, accuracies and uh, down in the six millimeter range. And then the um, ellipsoidal height uh, is almost three centimeters. And then naturally the orthometric is slightly greater than that, uh, uh, computed using geoid 18 um, at almost four centimeters. So I'm thinking um, that what I'm going to do is hit the horizontally pretty good, and then vertically I might be off a little bit. Uh, hard to say. I haven't done it. It's going to be a test. So I'm going to go out in the field, check it out, and uh, we'll see you back in a minute. Okay, here I am back out in the field. Um, I keyed in my Opus coordinate to Trimble Access, and now I'm in the process of staking it out. Uh, you can see my um, uh, precisions up there at the top right. Uh, currently right now I'm three hundredths by eight hundredths vertically. So what happens is, once you get out into the field, turn on your receiver, initialize um, or start your, your RTX survey, it takes a couple seconds for it to acquire the L-band uh, satellite lock. Once that happens, it takes meh, about 30 to 40 seconds really in the, um, uh, and your precisions will bake down to uh, right around uh, 8 hundredths horizontally by about double that vertically. Um, and my display here is legacy DRMS. That's what I would think um, most of you are used to. Um, and uh, um, the accuracies that I'm looking at will continue to improve over time. So even though within a minute I meet Trimble specification, I like waiting an extra couple minutes, uh, maybe up to about five minutes, and then you'll see these accuracies like I have on my screen. Um, and they will get slightly better. The best I've seen is uh, 2 hundredths horizontally by 5 hundredths vertically. Um, and maybe it'll bake down to that here while I'm talking. Um, you can see I'm staking out to my Opus solution. And uh, north, I'm bouncing right around 2, 2 and a half hundredths. West, uh, 3 and a half probably. And then a cut of... Uh, Five hundredths. Um, also, keep in mind that my Opus solution was done yesterday, so that is the ultra rapid orbit. Uh, uh, so I didn't wait and send it back in to get a rapid or precise. So it is what it is. Um, it was only about a 35 minute, I believe, data set that I had, so not a ton of data. Um, so Opus solutions will vary between themselves as well. You can see now it's even fine tuning and I'm down sub hundredth north, a uh, couple hundredths west and vertically I'm looking a little bit better than what I anticipated. Um, so anyways, I think I've proved the point that now that we incorporate displacement models and here in um, uh, North, uh, North America, uh, the one being used is the horizontal time dependent positioning utility, um, the same one found on the EGS website, version 3.2.9. Um, and that was really the missing piece to the puzzle. Uh, now that that's been incorporated, um, I, I think you're going to start seeing great results with um, RTX. So thank you for attending this Frontier Precision tailgate, and we'll see you on down the road. Thank you.